Welcome. For those of you I have not met, I see several familiar faces. I'm Gary Majetti, General Manager of uh, Disney California Metro Park. And I'm so excited, I, I cannot tell you, if you're half as excited as I am for Pixar Pier opening in June, then you're, gonna, you're overflowing with excitement because I can barely stand still. I actually just had an opportunity to walk through the construction yesterday afternoon and two things. I can't believe we're going to be open <laughs> in June. No, I can't. It's going to be fantastic. But one, uh, but two, the, the space is absolutely incredible for Lamplight Lounge. We're so excited to be able to feature this level of cuisine in the park. And uh, the Lamplight Lounge itself being a place where our Pixar artists uh, was their home away from home. This is a space where they've left their mark, certainly, and you, you're going to be experiencing so much of the history just through the venue itself. So when this location opens, it will have 261 seats downstairs, 200 seats upstairs, and it will be open for reservations. Now, once the reservations are released, we know they're gonna be going really fast, but think of this like the California Casual Gastropub. This is not your traditional three-course dining experience. We're gonna have larger items to share, and we'll also have uh, opportunities for entrees as well. But the whole idea, and I know I'm, she I'm stealing Chef John State's thunder, but yeah. I'm sure he'll, he'll tell you all about it. Uh, the, the California Casual Gastropub feel, that's what you're going to experience at the Lamplight Lounge. And as part of the entry area for Pixar Pier, we think it's going to be just such an incredible statement, a place for you to unwind and relax right on the waterfront. So without further ado, I would love to introduce our Pixar partners who have made this, helped make this dream a reality, Tasha Sunar and Roger Gould. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, so this project has been a lot of fun for me to work on personally because um, I love food <laughs> and I love cooking. Um, and so, um, and also I've been working at Pixar a long time and so I really like that this is a space where we can celebrate the artists behind the films and also some of the history of Pixar. And so inside this space, it's been a lot of fun digging through the archives at Pixar to find all the cool pieces of artwork and awesome behind the scenes research trip photos um, and we'll have a, we'll have these toy shelves where we picked out some really cool toys like from all of our different films that are I was trying to pick out stuff that people don't see too much here so maybe some stuff from other countries or just stuff that's a little bit more more rare um, and so I think the lounge will just have a lot a lot of cool stuff to look at and we wanted to make a place where people can come back multiple times and always find new stuff um, new stuff in the lounge to discover. Hi again. Well, uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know how much to add to that because really it's, it's fantastic that we've been able to create this space that really has these layers and layers of history because obviously the Pixar artists have been coming for years and years and so it's really fun. Literally, uh, we didn't even know that in the Pixar archives they're actually our toys. So when we are, we do have an archives department, and we're look, talking, working with them on all the art we're going to pull. We said, oh, and we also want to put in toys. Like, well, do you want to go to the archives? So literally, it turns out we've got a whole hidden toy archive as part of the studio. So that was fun for us to discover. But it's really, it's going to be a beautiful space, and we're really excited about the extraordinary food. Oh, good. I think that was it. Yes. All right. That's it. Oh my gosh. What's you? It's about the food now, right? Yes. Good morning, everybody. John State, Culinary Director of Disney California Adventure. I will share with you the vision of where the food started, what you're going to actually taste today, a couple of items. I apologize, there's not an adult beverage to wash it down with, but we can at least talk about it. So Gary had mentioned California Casual Gastro Pub, playfully presented. When you look at the, the verbiage of gastro pub, a, a coined phrase from a country far away, you know, gastro pub, came about when tavern owners were trying to figure out how to get their patrons to either sit longer and enjoy a beverage or come back more often. What better way than to add in food? When you add in the words California, you kind of have to wonder what's the importance of that? Well, there's something unique about 
where we are today physically, where we're located in Southern California, and you look at this diverse audience who's open to all these flavors, textures, ingredients. Some things might not be familiar, I'll guess, but certainly there will be a few of these nuances they'll find their way through the menu. It's important that we highlight what's happening today, what's happening in today's culture of eating. Uh, we like to graze, we like to share, we like to take pictures. Uh, this food, I think, it does look great, but for me, always important is what it tastes like. And when you read the menu, does it tell you the, what the trailer is? Does it match the movie? So this menu is, is pretty straightforward. You have a, a top half of the menu are picks and bits. That's the shareables. On the bottom half is the bigger bites. That full menu is available downstairs in the lounge area. And then a, a modified version will be available upstairs, which just will be the shareable items. Okay. The menu will have some changes throughout the year. We'll just keep pulsing in some new items that we edited from the menu. It was pretty hard once we came up with the core tasting. Uh, it's always difficult to say this one can't be on the menu now just because we can't expand that much for the opening, but we'll pulse it back in. Uh, it was, it was I, the thing that I enjoyed most about this menu ideation was we all loved all these dishes and it was hard to say no to this one uh, and I think it got pretty emotional which makes me feel good I hope that says a lot to our picks our partners that we uh, we want this to be an emotional connection for our guest so this is just a snapshot of what's on the uh, will be on the menu so you're gonna see uh, uh, f familiar food presented in a non familiar way so this first dish we have here is the are the potato skins now I think most of us know somehow what a potato skin dish looks like with the uh, crispy potatoes, the cheddar cheese, sour cream, bacon, but that's that's too expected. These are potato pillows, if you will. Crispy on the outside, soft, tender uh, potato on the inside. It's served with two different sauces. You have a brown butter caper yogurt sauce, and then you have a smoked uh, paprika aioli, crispy capers on top, and then the micro cilantro to round it out. Now this is again, this is the kind of dish that once you taste it, make sure when you cut into the potatoes, you swirl it into the, both the sauces. You'll figure out if you like one sauce over the other or both together, but this is meant to share, okay? Now for the, some people, when they hear the word sushi, they kind of run the other way, but sushi just means seasoned rice. This is a sushi offering that I think anybody who's shied away from sushi just hasn't found the sushi that's right for them. This is a, a grilled New York strip steak, carne asada style, so it's marinated in a roasted chili garlic uh, marinade. And then it has these uh, sweet uh, rice. You have the grilled green onions, jicama, avocado, wrapped in the seaweed. And the reason we picked the seaweed and the nori is that we really want to experience what sushi should resemble. We're not trying to fool anybody. This is, this is sort of the beginner's level of sushi. If you can start with this, then Maybe you'll go to the next one, but there's another sushi item on the menu that uh, we'll reveal at a later point. You have pickled Fresno chilies on top, pickled onions, cilantro, and then the crema. This is a dish that you'll get a chance to try also these two. Make sure that when you hold the coin in your hand, and by the way, sushi, amongst friends, you don't need chopsticks. You just use your fingers. And just make sure you dredge it into the crema, get a bite of the cilantro, the pickled onions. That brightness from the pickled vegetables really adds to the element. Okay. On the bigger bites, you have the warm, curly spinach salad, a charred onion vinaigrette, a perfectly poached egg, more pickled onions, shiitake bacon, and then blue cheese toast. Now when I say shiitake bacon, when you eat these crispy shiitakes, you can close your eyes and you can think to yourself, this sort of resembles bacon, the texture, the aroma. Uh, we're not trying to fool anybody, it's just adding another element to the uh, storytelling. What you want to do is you want to crack the egg and you stir it into the salad. That richness of the egg tied in with that charred onion vinaigrette. And then a bite of the blue cheese toast. This could be shared. I don't know if I would share it with anybody. Okay. Also on the bigger bite section you have the uh, crispy chicken sandwich. I, I think it's pretty straightforward. You have this brine chicken uh, thing tossed into this beautiful light batter, almost like a tempura. Crispy cooked, then it's tossed in this gochujang, chili sauce, sesame seeds, 
in this sandwich, you don't see all the layers, but there's a pickled vegetables, uh, there's a pickled uh, slaw. This is a boiled dressing slaw, not the creamy slaw. And then another hidden layer in there is this pineapple butter. So you get this sweet, spicy, vinegary, and then that soft Amish bun. The Amish bun is on the sweeter side. But again, this, this has been thought through. I don't know how many buns we actually tasted just to get to this one. So there's a science behind it, the right size, the right weight. And then of course, uh, if you don't toast the bun, that's a deal breaker. Okay, so next time you're out eating, look for that. Of course, we invite our budding artists the Nine and Under group to join in, uh, in dining with us. This is just one of the examples of the menu of, I think there's four offerings total. This is the peanut butter and jelly roll, right? Whole wheat bread, slather of peanut butter, roll, cut into coins. You have the uh, strawberry jelly over the top. So son, daughter feels like they're eating like mom and dad, sushi style. It will come with the flower pot. The flower pot has the hummus, the cucumber, the celery, and the carrot and then a collection of fresh fruit. So again, this is just a snapshot of what the menu will look like to come. Uh, and then we couldn't survive without having the right beverage pairings and the right amount of beverages. So I will have Allison give us a preview of a couple of beverages that we're featuring today of handmade cocktails and then more about the beer and wine then. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Chef John. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm the Senior Production Manager for Food and Beverage in California Adventure on the West Side. Um, Thank you for being here with us today. We're really excited to share all of this with you. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the beverage program. We're um, super excited because we have a beverage program in this restaurant that's completely unique to our restaurant. It's not available anywhere else in the, in the company. And we have several cocktails that, all of the cocktails and the mocktails actually have, um, they have unique names to them. And as you can see, the two cocktails we're showing today, one is the over budget and the other one is the last word. So these names often have references either to the film industry or to Pixar. Um, the over budget is our, our take on the Moscow Mule, which is your standard Moscow Mule with vodka and ginger beer, etc. But we've added some passion fruit into it, which gives it kind of a really nice richness. It's delicious. And then our other drink that's over there is the last word. And that one is very, very refreshing drink. That will be a favorite for everybody in the summer to come and sit out on the patio and enjoy um, a nice cocktail in the afternoon. We also will have 12 beers on tap downstairs and six on tap upstairs along with several, um, several canned and bottled options as well. And we also will have one beer that is, uh, will be unique just to this location. Nobody else in the country will have it and it won't even be served in the tasting room. So Bottle Logic is making a proprietary beer just for us. So that is our, pro our program. We'll also have um, mocktails for the kids and um, hope you come out and enjoy it once we get open next month. Thank you. Thanks, Allison, Chef. So we are incredibly excited. I mean, can you just picture yourself in the space right there with the water, the waterfront, the breezes coming through. You've got fun lounge furniture. The, uh, you can't really see it on here, but the indoor outdoor bar area actually has some bump outs. So to allow for conversation, uh, instead of just everyone sitting just right along the bar, the interior space is gorgeous. Uh, both upstairs and downstairs and when you see when you walk into the entry and see this amazing custom chandelier that the, the team has put together uh, you're going to be it's absolutely breathtaking so tell us a little bit more about from the WDI our Walt Disney Imaginary partners we've got Charlie Kowalski surprise <laughs> he said he told me he was going to turn it over to me uh, Going back to the image again, I can't tell you how excited we were when we were tasked by Gary, Michael Coblazer, and Patrick Finnegan to come up with a new exciting bar, a gastro pub that would be a trendsetter for us here. And for those of you who know the old Cove bar, this takes the bar up really, really high. It's going to be really exciting for us. And as we walk the site every day, this morning we put the bar top in. It's a pewter bar top amazingly gorgeous. It's part of the renovation of the old warehouse is part of our story that we're talking about. The tile floor went in, it mimics an old warehouse tile floor again. The ceiling is going in with barrel vault ceilings with old reclaimed wood and on the floor that you can see that helps tell the story. But most importantly is our partnership with Pixar. It has been 
absolutely inspiring from our point of view. This is our first real in-depth partnership with Pixar. We do a lot of little things with them, but this is the big one, the whole Pixar Pier, and particularly uh, the Lamp Light Lounge. And so I cannot say enough good things about the team up at Pixar, beginning with Roger Gould, Liz Gazzano, Krista Scheffler, and Tasha. So we've had a wonderful experience with them. All the designs and ideas and thoughts that they have brought to the table to help enrich and enliven this whole story that we've got here. I think you'll be very, very surprised once this bar is open, uh, the amount of story and show that you're going to have in there and what the guest experience will be. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And thank you for coming today. Carlos told me to keep it short. The food's getting cold. <laughs> That's right, it's time to eat. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Charlie. You're very welcome.